All right, we're live on YouTube. And we're on our site, we can start. All righty, good evening, everyone. I wanna thank uh, each and every one of you for joining us, all of our chairpersons and uh, any council member their representatives. Thank you for joining us this evening. I also wanna thank everyone who uh, attended our State of the Borough address last Friday. And for those who were not able to join us, the speech will be available on our YouTube channel so everyone can hear about the plans and excitement that we have for our wonderful borough appointments. Tonight, we are pleased to be joined by Patrol Borough North and South, as well as our inspectors and leaders from our 16 Queens precincts. Our office takes pride in assuring that we have consistent communication with Queens law enforcement and our community leaders. So tonight, we look forward to both commanding officers or both chiefs and commanding officers to provide an update on comp stat numbers, trending crimes in preparation for our summer months. We don't have to wait for something had to happen to bring us all together. In Queens, we are proactive. Uh, we will first hear from Deputy Chief Christine Bass Bassadinbeck. I hope I didn't chop that up too, too much, who is a commanding officer for Patrol Borough Queens North. After Chief Bassadinbeck, uh, provides her update. We will hear from Deputy Chief Kevin Williams, who is a commanding officer for Patrol Borough Queen South. After both presentations are complete, I will open the floor for questions and concerns. I anticipate we will have a lot of questions and concerns, so really try to be short and concise so we can get through to everyone. With that being said, it gives me the great pleasure, and I want to thank uh, Chief for the work that she's doing and moving uh, Patrol Borough North in a different direction. Uh, Chief Bassett Dinbeck, thank you for joining us. And please correct me if I'm saying your last name. You're almost right on, sir. It's Bassett Dinbeck, but that's probably Bassett Dinbeck. Bassett Dinbeck. All right, got it. <laughs> probably as close as I've heard anyone say it. So, <laughs> 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 so thank you. Yeah, no, thank thank you for having us uh, having us on tonight. Um, I'll just talk to you a little bit about, uh, you know, what, what crime is looking like in, in Queens North. Um, so for, for the year, we are up. Um, we're, we're doing uh, better than we did at, at the start of the year, but, but we are still up. We're up 7.2% within the overall borough, um, up 343 crimes. For the last 28 days, we are at 6.6%, .6 up 72 crimes. Our robberies are up by four, 3.3%. Our felony assaults are up by four at 1.9%. Our bur burglaries are actually down. Uh, we're down 19 for 11.9%. Our grand larcenies were up 24 uh, for 5.1%. And our grand larceny autos, which is a problem throughout the city, um, we're up actually 54.9% or 62 additional steals uh, than compared to last year. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the trends that we're seeing, uh, you know, so, so a little bit of detail stuff. Um, you know, one of the things that that I had been I had mentioned at, at one of the last meetings, um, ATM distractions. This, this is something that we're seeing in Queens North. It's something that is happening throughout the city, um, but particularly in Queens North. Um, and, and there's two types of ones that I just want to talk about so that we could kind of get the, the information out to everyone. Um, we're actually just posting a, a, a video on our, uh, our, our Twitter that kind of like shows what this is all about too. But basically it's um, when you go to the ATM machine, um, individ individuals will, will be in the lobby with you and they'll watch as you uh, are at the ATM machine. And so what they'll do is they'll try and ascertain your pin. So, you know, when you're at the ATM, I don't know, me personally, while I'm there, I'm, I'm always covering my hand and making sure that, that nobody's uh, seeing what my PIN number is. But basically, that's what they do. They'll come in, they'll watch you put your PIN number in uh, into the machine, and then, and then they try to distract you. So what we're seeing is, uh, you know, they'll, they'll drop some money next to you or they'll drop a piece of paper, and then they'll tell you, oh, you, you dropped that. And now as you lean down or look down to pick that up, um, they reach in and they take your ATM card out of the machine. Um, and then, or, or they'll take it out and they'll swap it out. Um, so just something that we ask that you do, you know, be, be aware of, of, uh, you know, who's around you. Try not, you know, if someone approaches you at, at an ATM, uh, just, you know, kind of disregard them until you're 
complete with your, your transactions. Um, another one that we're seeing relative to, to ATMs is, is after the fact. So as after you, you finish up with your ATM, you know, you, you, you walk over to your car, you go to get into your car, uh, or you get into your car and you start driving, and then someone will tell you, oh, you're, you, you have a flat tire, or it looks like your tire was slashed. Now you get out to look at, at your tire, and now they're going into your vehicle, and they're taking your bag with your ATM and, and the money that you just took out of the ATM. So just be mindful of, you know, these, these types of distractions. Um, one of the other things I, I mentioned as I started was, was grand larceny autos or, or vehicle thefts. Um, and again, not only in Queens North, but, but citywide, this is a big problem. Um, we are up, uh, as I said, 54% uh, for the 28 days and 49% for the year. Um, 112 of our 662 vehicle thefts involved keys or key fobs being left in a vehicle. Uh, 52 of them, the vehicle was running, the others, they were not running. So here you have, you're making it a little bit easier for, for folks to, to steal the vehicle. So what we ask is that, you know, please just be mindful, you know, keep keep that, that key fob in your pocket. Don't, don't leave it in your vehicle. Some of the higher uh, end vehicles, uh, it's very um, obvious that you're, you're, you have a key in your vehicle. The, the side view mirrors will turn in when your car is locked. Uh, or when the key is not in there, and if it if the key is in there, then then the um, the mirrors will be out. So you know, thieves know this, and they'll look and they go, "Oh, th this is one I can easily take." So we want you to make it a little bit harder for them. Um, there are a few types of vehicles that we are seeing uh, stolen more than others in Queens North. Um, Hondas, particularly CRVs, um, and Hyundai's and Kias. Uh, now Hyundai and Kia. Uh, these thieves are able to steal the car by accessing the steering column. You may have seen this as part of that Kia challenge uh, or TikTok challenge. Um, and but the companies have issued a recall and are fixing this issue. So if if you or anyone you know has these types of vehicles, just we ask that you contact the dealership to make sure that they update this so that it's it's not as easy for uh, for folks to to steal the car. And then the Honda CRVs, this we're seeing at, at a high rate uh, of, of thefts, um, particularly on the 2017 to 2022 year end models. Um, and this, what they're able to do is they're able to access it's There's an onboard diagnostic port. Um, and what they do is they're able to buy a, a key fob from say like Amazon, you know, two, two bucks to buy a new key fob. And then they're able to hook into your diagnostic port and reprogram the key fob. Um, and, th and then essentially they're driving away with a set of keys that are uh, able to, to start your vehicle uh, moving forward. So what we recommend here is, you know, try and invest in a lock for that diagnostic port. It's just another step for, you know, a thief to have to, to try and go through in, in order to potentially steal your car. And what you may have heard over uh, the weekend, um, you know, the mayor was talking about this, Chief of Patrol was talking about this. Um, you know, we're, we're recommending folks to, to try and put some kind of tracking device within your vehicle, you know, whether it's an Apple tag or some other type of, um, you know, tracking device, you, you hide that in your vehicle. Now your vehicle is stolen. You're able to like log right in, you let us know, and we, we're able to work hand in hand with, uh, you know, the, the, the rest of the officers throughout the city we're able to track and work hand in hand to say, all right, um, they're going over the the uh, the Whitestone Bridge. They're going into the Bronx. We're able to communicate with the Bronx and let them know that the vehicle is is traveling there, and we're able to uh, to make that um, that apprehension and recover your car. So uh, th those are just a few of the the uh, some of the trends that that we're seeing. Just wanted to talk about, um, and then listen, where you know, obviously we we look at crime that's going on on a, on a daily basis. Uh, we adjust our deployment. Um, we did just get an additional 52 officers out of the police academy, um, you know, and disperse them throughout uh, the precincts within our, uh, our borough. Uh, so that's, that's additional resources. Uh, we do have our um, community response teams. We do have our uh, public safety teams that we deploy uh, to, you know, to these, these trends that we see. Um, 
you know, summer is coming up, we're, we're putting plans together to, to make sure that, that we, you know, address trends that we, we normally see over the summer. Um, I know one thing that, that uh, normally comes up and, and is a big complaint, and not that it's a summer thing, but it definitely increases in the summer months is, um, you know, the, these ATVs and motorcycles and mopeds, um, you know, these are things that, that we'll be monitoring Although I do just want to let you know that, that that's something that uh, while we'll, there definitely will be a push for that throughout the, the summer, that, that, that that's something that we're already working on and have been working on throughout the year. Um, I mean, just, just taking a look at what we've done so far throughout, throughout the, this year, um, we've arrested 77 individuals uh, in, in relation to these types of things. Uh, we've issued over 3,800 summonses and we've seized 587 of these types of vehicles. Um, so look, mopeds, you, you know, mopeds are allowed to be used on the streets, uh, but they have to be registered, they have to be insured and the operator has to have uh, a driver's license and they can't drive recklessly. So even if they have all of those things, they can't drive recklessly. But a lot of what we see is folks that are, are operating these uh, these uh, vehicles without any of that stuff. And so uh, we are actively seizing those and making sure that uh, we're taking them off the street. Um, and so that's that's really what I just wanted to, to start with. I know we have our, our, our commanding officers on uh, and we'll take any questions from you, but um, you know, really just looking to, to continue to work hand in hand with you all um, you know, any issues that you see, uh, the, the communication is there and we appreciate that, uh, you know, there's a lot that we see on our own out there, but anything that you see, uh, please make sure that you bring it to our attention so that we can address the issues um, and, and uh, correct it for you. Thank you, Chief Bassenbeck. We'll go to Chief Williams and then we'll open it up for questions. That's what Chief Williams. All right. Good, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Borough President. Thank you for having us. Uh, you know, for the year to date, the borough's experiencing a 2% decrease in index crimes. Um, you know, that we have only increases in two of our seven categories of crime so far this year. Felony assaults are up about roughly 8%, and our burglaries are up 6%. Uh, we're seeing the largest decrease in, in the crime of murder, which is down 69%. All right, seven of our eight commands within Queensland have, have experienced increases in deep, uh, index crimes. Uh, the 101, the 103, the 105, and the 107 precinct are up. All right, uh, whereas all the other commands are showing decreases. When we look at our shootings, Patrol Borough Queen South is experiencing an overall 37% decrease in shooting incidents. That's 15 less shootings um, than we had this time last year. There are no Queen South commands that are experiencing increases of shooting years to date. Um, so like with my counterpart, Christine Bespinebeck said, Chief, I should say Chief, I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, you know, when we look at the 28 day, uh, we're showing an increase, a 4% increase in overall index crimes. Uh, we are showing increases in robbery, felony assaults, burglaries, and grand larceny of an auto. Um, the other three categories, murder, rape, and grand larceny, we're showing decreases. Three of our eight commands within Queen South are experiencing increases. That's the 103, the 105, and the 106 precinct. All the others are showing decreases for the 28-day uh, period. Uh, similar to some of the issues that Chris, uh, Chief Bespinebeck brought up, we are being challenged again, uh, with grand larceny of an auto. We're seeing a 15% increase for the 28-day. Uh, even though we're down year to date, it's still a disturbing trend. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been hit um, very hard in regards to that. Some of those same issues that the good chief brought up, we're experiencing the Kia challenge, uh, things that nature, keys being left in the car. So we're doing a very aggressive uh, educational campaign around those issues uh, to address those issues. Uh, like the good chief said, um, you know, yesterday there was a big press conference by the mayor and the chief of department, chief of patrol, in regards to putting tagging devices in the vehicles. Um, so, you know, hopefully we'll get that out to, to the public. Uh, what we're really struggling in the 28 day and also year to day is our, our burglaries. Uh, a lot of them residential burglaries, um, rare window entries. Uh, we're up week to date, 
28 day and year to date. Uh, that's something we continue to struggle with here at Patrol Borough Queens South. Um, you know, between the patrol response and the detectives investigating it, we thoroughly respond and investigate these burglaries. But again, we have to continue to address those issues uh, in regards to burglaries. And we're doing everything within our power in the New York City Police Department to address it. Another issue in which we are still struggling are felony assaults. Uh, we're up 15% for the 28 day, up 8%. Um, along the line, we're seeing a huge increase in domestic related assaults. Um, so, uh, domestic violence is something we take very serious here in Patrol Borough, Queen South. We have a robust domestic violence prevention program. We have our domestic violence officers that go out and prevent, home, I mean, that conduct home visits uh, in regards to that. Um, you know, one caveat that I can say about our arrest across the board, felony assaults, uh, about 80% of those are, uh, crimes are closed to an initial patrol arrest. That means the crime happened, the police officers responded, and they made an initial arrest. Uh, still, we don't like the numbers that we're seeing, so we can continue to drill down on them. But, you know, the 80% of those being close to arrest is something that is, if you want to take away uh, positive, that's a positive. And we're starting to see an increase in robberies here in Patrol Borough, Queen South. We're down slightly for the year to date, but for the 28 day, we're showing a 6.4% increase uh, in robberies. Uh, you know, we look at it, we analyze it. There's no robbery crews. A lot of what we get in one-off robberies. Uh, also, what we're seeing is that we have a shoplifting that turns into robbery because the use of force is used to retain the property. Uh, so those are things we continue to drill down on um, here in, in Patrol Borough, Queen South, in regards to crime. Uh, one thing I do want to touch on, I want to touch on our uh, vehicle accidents. Vehicle collisions year to date, we're experiencing a 9% decrease in, in collisions. Five of our uh, eight commands are showing decreases uh, with three commands showing increases. When we look at the 28 day period, uh, we're still showing a 16% decrease in vehicle collision, collision with all our commands showing decreases. Uh, unfortunately, year to date, we have seven fatal vehicle collisions compared to four last year. But we continue to utilize the three E's to save lives and increase traffic flow. Education, engineering, and enforcement. Uh, throughout the borough, we have conducted educational operations regarding illegal e-mobility bikes. We continue to work with our partners in the Department of Transportation to re-engineer the roads and intersections to make them safer. And we have increased our enforcement both year to date and the current 28 day, day period. All of this is done to change driver behavior and reduce fatalities on our road. Uh, one vehicle related issue that is a huge quality of life issue for our residents here in Patrol Borough, Queen South is the overnight parking of commercial vehicles. Uh, everybody knows how serious I am about this. So here in Patrol Borough, uh, Queen South, we took the issue by the horn and we have conducted three operations with our partners in the Transportation Bureau and the Department of Sanitation. And within these three operations, we towed, booted, and summoned commercially parked vehicles that were on the streets overnight. In those three operations, we have towed 286 commercial vehicles, booted 321 vehicles, and issued over um, 2,300 summons. And the Department of Sanitation has uh, removed about 43 derelict vehicles. Uh, one thing I always speak about is the, the quality of life issues that we have here in Patrol Borough, Queen South. And one of the things that we focus on is our smoke shops. You know, these smoke shops are very problematic. Every community meeting I go to, those issues come up. So year to date, the precincts have conducted about 120 special operations at smoke shop, resulting in 51 felony arrests, 29 misdemeanor arrests, uh, two violation arrests, uh, about 77 summonses being issued. In these inspections, we removed five, five firearms. Uh, we've also conducted 10 undercover buys, which have resulted to nine locations being submitted for nuisance abatement, abatement, excuse me, I'm sorry. And um, so far working with the department, I mean, working with the sheriff's office, we have closed two smoke shops throughout the borough. So it's something that we're gonna continue to work on um, here in, in Queen South, because we know how problematic it is for a lot of different issues. Uh, one thing I want to touch on, again, something that always comes up when I go out to meet with the community's personnel. Personnel can, continues to be somewhat of a challenge. Um, 
currently have over about 1,500 uniform members of the service from the rank of P police officer, lieutenant, uh, performing patrol in our eight commands. Uh, in January, the department changed its field training model. So now when we get newly graduated recruits, we are sending them directly to their commands for training. This last class that just graduated two weeks ago, we received 42 police officers. Uh, we're putting them into commands um, throughout Patrol Borough Queen South. In the last four academy classes, we received 146 police officers that we have put out in precincts here in Queen South. Uh, one other thing I want to touch on, the 116th precinct. Uh, for those who know, it's been a long fought battle for the 116th precinct. It's currently under construction with an anticipated completion date of fall 2024. The 116 precinct will serve Laurelton, Rosedale, Brookdale, and Springfield Garden areas. The precinct is being built next to the current 105 precinct satellite and the Long Island Railroad Station. And the construction is being overseen by the Department of Design and Construction. And I do believe me and the good borough president will be taking a tour of that sometime in the near future. Uh, a couple of things, we're gonna talk on our summer plans. Um, as we know, there's unique challenges here in Patrol Borough, Queen South, when it comes to our summer uh, programs. One of them, as uh, Chief Bessbeenbeck brought up, the ATV dirt bikes, dirt bike situation. We have done a lot of work spearheaded by the Chief of Department and Chief of Patrol already around dirt bike and dirt bike enforcement and seizures. We're going to continue to do what we did um, last summer in regards to that. We're doing it already with our community response teams working in Camden, not only here in the borough, but also with our partners in Queens North. Um, one of the other things that we always look to do, we're going to enhance our response to 311 jobs uh, in Patrol Borough, Queen South, especially when it comes to house parties. I'm very proud of the work that's being done by the women and men in this department where we had no violence at house parties last year. Did we answer the call to everyone? The answer is absolutely not, but not to go the whole summer in Queen South where house parties are always problematic. I think that's very, very good. Uh, as always, the Rockaway Beach detail, we will have officers assigned specifically to the Rockaway Beach detail along in the 100 and the 101 precincts. And then we have our summer violence reduction program, which we work with the chief of department's office to bring additional resources in those areas that we see where historical violence happens in the summer, where we will um, augment the precinct with foot posts and things of that nature. But I look forward to answering any questions. I have all the commanding officers here. Uh, so if there's any specific question for a precinct, they're here to, to answer. But thank you, Mr. Borough President. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for that update. And I want to go to uh, Queens North first. So we know that there have been some um, specific trends in particular precincts 109, 110, 115. Um, what are we doing differently this year in terms of deployment of resources um, to these precincts? Um, you know, because I, I do watch the numbers and there are certainly some troubling trends in terms of resources. So where are we at uh, with that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you want to talk, Laurent, about the 109? Sure, absolutely. Can you, can everybody hear me clearly? Yes. Uh, absolutely. So with the 109, uh, obviously we, we've had some unique challenges as it relates to crime increase. Um, last year we saw an, an increase of about 48% in crime. And as far as this year goes, um, we're seeing the same sort of increase, but to a lesser degree being up 24% in crime. But really and truly the bulk of the crime that we, we have been experiencing, we've seen it in downtown Flushing, where earlier on in the year, downtown Flushing accounted for just about 44% of, of our total index crime. So what have we done to try to um, suppress the crime in downtown Flushing? And we all know downtown Flushing, it's um, Insector Boy. Um, it's really the melting pot, pot of the 109 precinct with all the commercial establishments that we have down there, a lot of eateries, um, a lot of malls to include um, Skyview Mall, Tangram Mall, New World Mall, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we, we've taken a multifaceted approach to try to suppress crime um, in downtown Flushing. First and foremost, it goes with being um, very tight with the analysis, knowing where we need to be, the times that we need to deploy our offices. So with that being said, we've had um, an influx of, of new officers to the tune of 50 plus officers within the last six months where they've been strategic, strategically deployed in downtown Flushing, 
um, a combination of day tour officers on foot, a combination of officers on the six to twos, really having a presence out there, obviously to suppress crime, have not omnipresence, but also to engage with the local community, to also engage with the local shops, going in, uh, doing community visits inside the store, really to make their presence known. And I'm glad to report that we're seeing a significant decrease in crime. You know, we still want to do better. But we, we've seen a, a significant increase in, in crime. As I stated in the beginning of the year, we were accounted for 44 percent of crime in downtown Flushing. Now we're about 33 percent. So a lot of the crime is being suppressed. We're seeing a, a, a higher incidence of arrest um, in downtown Flushing. But to also continue with that, we've done a lot of crime prevention. Um, really and truly, we've seen some 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 problems as it relates to like pickpocketing, things of that sort where we've really engaged the community, had crime prevention come out there, speak to the uh, people, the community and the businesses and in different languages, whether it be Spanish, uh, Korean and Chinese, really to get that message across to, to have the community also assist us in, in some of the crime suppression efforts um, in downtown Flushing. We've also had an influx of additional resources from not only Patrol Borough Queens North in the way of specialty units, but also um, in, from downtown. Uh, so there's a lot of efforts going on um, in downtown Flushing, and I'm glad to report um, that things are getting better. We still have a lot more to do, uh, but things are getting better. And we also tackle some of the illegal vending issues down there that also exacerbate some of the um, the crowding in downtown Flushing. So really addressing that has helped us on a way of of some of the shoplifting and some of the grand larceny pickpockets and and bag dips that we've seen in downtown Flushing. But you're still seeing somewhat a drastic increase from last year. So I think still at 26%, I think, if I'm correct. So are you saying those numbers are starting to trend in a different direction? And, and I don't, and I just want to also start with the premise always that we understand we have a role to play. So, you know, right. I task my office, for instance, in really trying to figure out ways to really incorporate more job fairs up there. Because a lot of this seems like, you know, some of it, not all of it would certainly seem um, like crimes of poverty and we want to try to reduce those as much as we can in our power. And we understand that that's really going to take community-based support, job fairs, other things to scale up right. the economy there to really help to reduce um, um, some of the challenges you're seeing. So that's a longer term play. So I don't want to put, I just want to put that out there. Like we're, we, we don't expect for you to resolve all of these crimes or where we can make a difference and certainly you're going to scale up as well um, in your area. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen also trends where, where even though we're seeing some, some moderate improvement, improvements in downtown Flushing, mm -hmm. we've also seen in other parts of the precinct where uh, we're still struggling with certain crimes. We've discussed it in the past as it relates to our burglary situation in the precinct, predominantly residential burgs. And it's really getting that information out to members of the community. Um, and we utilize our community board, community board seven, our local civics to really get that message out. Um, we see a high incidence of individuals who are victim of residential burglaries who um, are leaving lump, large sums of money in their residences, um, design of bags, jewelry, things of that sort. And it's often a target of, of, uh, of burglary recidivists in the precinct. So we, 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 we always, um, put that information out. We give certain crime prevention tips as it relates to not keeping that sort of product inside their homes, equipping their homes with, with video, things of that sort. So any uneventful um, fact that if we take a, a, a robbery or, or a burglary or things of that sort, that we have uh, uh, investigative uh, information or investigative value to some of these cases where our detectives can um, eventually make an arrest on these crimes. I'm going to go to, because I, you know, speak to y'all on the side, so I will, because I know we're going to have a lot of questions, uh, allow Khalil and uh, Michael to run this portion of the program. Yeah. Copy that, uh, Borough President Richards. Uh, good good evening, everybody. I'm Michael Mallon, Chief of Staff of the Borough President, uh, and happy to field questions at this time. I, I see... Uh, uh, Vinny R. Curry from CB5 has his hand up, followed by Reverend Thorbs. Yes, this is for, uh, I guess, Queens North and the 104. It appears that there is no one on patrol in the 104. All the cars 
and all the officers that are in the precinct, they respond to 911, 311, and maybe a crime in progress, emergency. Why is there no one out patrolling anywhere in the 104th precinct? Good, good evening, everybody. I'm Deputy Inspector Kevin Coleman, Commanding Officer of the 104 Precinct. Uh, thank you for that question. And so um, we are out there on patrol and answering jobs. Um, you may not always see us. We do cover a large area, uh, you know, 7.4 square miles. And we have, uh, we have one of, so you understand, we have one of the largest, we are the largest 311 precinct in the entire city of New York. Last year, we had over 43,000 311 jobs. Um, and that's in addition to our 911 calls. Um, you know, we, are, we do have uh, at our precinct, we are down our standard number of uh, police officers. We are hoping to get more in the future. But um, even so, that does not mean our hands are tied. We are doing everything we can um, with our resources to ensure that we are addressing quality life issues and uh, combating crime. Uh, this year, uh, for example, we are, you know, we we are dedicated to um, <clears throat> ensuring that we are summonsing and confiscating illegal uh, motorbikes that are out in the street. And uh, the way I like to describe it is. When that happens, when we take a bike off the street, we're really combating two problems. There is the there is the public safety factor about bikes going through red lights and on sidewalks and so on. And then the other factor is people do commit crimes. Not everybody, but some people commit robberies, shootings, and so on off the back of the bikes. And so that is that's one issue we're addressing. We're also ensuring that we are doing enforcement on paper plates, fraudulent plates. And then ultimately in, in the 104, as you may be aware, we have a lot of parking issues. I mentioned we have the highest 311 calls, approximately 70% of our 311 calls are parking issues. And uh, <clears throat> this year alone, we have towed over 200 vehicles um, in response to community complaints of illegal parking, improper registration, and this kind of thing. And I, I don't think you'll find um, another precinct in the city that has done enough work, uh, more work than us in that area. So um, I can assure you that we are out there, we are addressing issues, we are answering 911 and 311 calls, uh, but it is a challenging time. We are understaffed, but we are um, maximizing our resources to ensure that the public is safe here. So if you walk out your front door right now, those eight or 10 patrol cars are sitting there because there are no offices. There's no one on patrol. Yes, we you do respond. Yes, you do respond to 911, 311 emergency calls and such. But all those cars are sitting there with nobody in them, nobody out on patrol. So, um, you know, we are, I would like more officers at the 104 precinct. Um, and we are very short at the precinct. But I can assure you that with our limited resources, we are going to continue to do our best to lower crime and to address quiet life summons. Uh, quality of life issues. And in fact, with crime, you know, we are up uh, 7% for year to date, 7% in our index crime. However, earlier in the year, we were up 12%. Um, and so we are headed in um, the right, uh, we are trending in the right direction. And I believe that we will um, have a very successful year in public safety here at the 104 precinct. I don't want to take up everybody's time, but just, I think we need people out on the street. Thank you. Thank you both. We'll move on to Reverend Gorbs. Uh Good evening, everyone. And thank you, um, Borough, Mr. Donovan, our Borough President, for uh, having this 
forum. I'm sorry, I can't turn my camera on for some reason. But uh, these are my questions for um, Queen South. Uh, Chief Williams, has DOT or sanitation reached out to the 103 in regards to an implementing a cleanup of the vendors on Jamaica Avenue? Okay, uh, I have the good Inspector Robinson on the line. Eric? Uh, yeah, Reverend, um, we are in constant contact with the uh, Department of Sanitation as well as the um, the city agency that oversees the vendors. Sergeant Calgary, uh, this is something that we do on a regular basis. We're well aware of the conditions, uh, especially on Jamaica over by Union Hall Street, but it, we are in constant communication with them. Okay, and the agency that's that is dealing with that is that sanitation or is it DOT? With the actual vendors, and of course now the uh, the initials are going to escape me because now I can't think of it. Of course, uh, but, the uh, Department of Workers. Yeah, the workers. Protected. But I believe the mayor just shifted it to sanitation, so there's going to be a shift. So you know, so I would say, um, be a little. I, I hate to say, be patient. But yeah. like this was just announced like two or three weeks ago. Okay. So that transition period is happening now with sanitation. And, and, and we haven't, uh, Reverend, to be honest, we haven't seen that uh, transition, you know, come to fruition. But it is something. And, and we do these meetings every week in Ms. Reddick's office. You know, once mm -hmm. a month, Reddick's office, we're in constant communication. So we knew a change had to be made. Um, it wasn't working the way it was. So. You know, I, I'm very optimistic moving forward that we're going to be able to take more enforcement and get more of these vendors off the street. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, my next question is regarding the, the mopeds. The chief that be, that spoke from the beginning, she was giving out information in regards to the mopeds. So is there some sort of PSA that's going to go out um, to let the public know that they need to be registered, that they should have insurance? and that they need to have a license to be uh, riding, driving those uh, mopeds? Uh, Reverend Thors, I know it's Chief Williams and I'll answer that. We have done social media outreach uh, with the Chief of Transportation Office in regards to the rules and regulations in regards to uh, mopeds. Uh, mopeds are allowed to be on the street if they're properly registered. Uh, in regards to ATV and, dirt, ATV and dirt bikes, they are not allowed to be on the street at all because they are not street legal. So we have done education and, and awareness via our social media channels, uh, uh, Twitter, that's what it's called, yeah, Twitter and Facebook. So we have done education around that. Okay. Uh, Reverend Thor, before you move to your next point, please, um, if you can send over that sort of information, because we should all be sharing it on our channels. Um, so I understand you, you all do, but just making sure that the community board and we also like to have that information as well so we can... Uh, put it out or not, Tom. Not a problem. Okay, and um, we um we too in the one thirteen, and I guess in the one hundred three, we would like to see more of our NCO officers. I'm hearing from constituents that they're not seeing them as much. There was a time they saw them more, and I guess I know things have shifted and changed, and so some assignments are different, but they need to see them more more in the community. And lastly, we CB12 supports the 103 precinct. We know that the MTA is making a move to um, relocate to the lot in front of the 103 precinct. And we are um, against that move because it takes away from the precinct as well. And uh, we're just um, supporting them. And as the meetings begin to unfold, I, we just wanted to let you all know that we are um, speaking on behalf of the precinct when we sit in these, me these meetings as well. All right, Reverend Thorpe, thank you very much for your support. Uh, obviously, if the bus depot is relocated to across the street from the 103rd precinct, it will present, pre present some significant challenges uh, in regards to not only officer parking, but general parking in that area. So uh, we appreciate your support. In regards and and to let, me add, let me add that it, there's definitely going to be, a there has to be a temporary move. Um, because the current bus depot is going to be demolished. So we are speaking to all parties to make sure that in lieu of that, that it's a short-term plan and not a long-term plan. Um, so there's a lot going on behind the scenes on this one. 
Um, and it could go either way, quite frankly, at this point, um, because it's it's a negotiation at this point. So I just want you to all know I, that I'm in alignment with Board 12 on this and the 103rd as well on ensuring that this is not a permanent fix. Um, um, and, you know, and, and this is something short term. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes to try to make this not become a permanent thing. But the site is, current depot is going to be demolished. So it's not, you know, it, it, we, folks are going to have to be re relocated temporarily. We even suggested to the MTA for them to stage the buses on Jamaica Avenue. Regular traffic is not on Jamaica they're Avenue anyway. Yeah, they're not doing it. So, yeah. we're, you know, so I just met with them um, last week. We'll have another meeting with them tomorrow. We're talking to the developers to check, you know, so we're doing everything we can on our push for there to be some sort of compromise or deal. So, to, to be compared. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, Betty Bratton. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, uh, Mr. Borough President. My uh, question is for uh, Chief Williams. The uh, Community Board 10 serves the same area as the 106 precinct. We have been very pleased with the uh, trends that we are seeing since the beginning of the year with crime trending down. But we are now going into the summer season, which traditionally has been the season where we lose offices. You know, we understand there are needs in other places, but we are very concerned that we are going to see the impact on the drop in crime that we're seeing because of lack of offices during the summer months, when certainly in our precinct, as in all precincts, the quality of life concerns pick up. So I want to ask you what kind of uh, resources we can expect and can we expect not to see offices sent into Manhattan and being sent everywhere else as well you know we understand the beach detail but you know everywhere else our offices are going is concerning thank you all right thank you Betty uh as always um personnel remains a struggle but one thing that I can honestly say with the chief department chief control uh, they realize some of the, the challenges that traditionally we have. So uh, one of the things that Betty's talking about, we used to do last year, we used to send cops to Times Square. We used to send type cops to Jamaica Avenue. We used to send cops uh, to details in, um, in uh, 125th Street, right? So one thing that they realized and downtown realized in their staffing models, these details, quote unquote, Times Square, the Jamaica Avenue Revitalization District, the 125th Street zone have all been staffed uh, with personnel. So we will not be flying cops mm -hmm. from these commands into those, those positions. Now, Betty, you're probably gonna lose one or two cops to the Rockaway Beach detail. I'm gonna be very honest with you in regards to that. <laughs> but, also, <laughs> but one of the things that we worked out with, uh, again, downtown, uh, realizing they're going to do, again, the summer all-out program with all our administrative leaning uh, units in the police department. So the vast majority of the police officers that are going to be assigned to the Rockaway Beach detail are coming from there. We are supplying about a third of the police officers for the Rockaway Beach summer detail, but the other two-thirds are coming from outside command. So we are hoping with the way we changed our field training program when we put the officers into the precinct, those officers are not allowed to fly out of the command because they're learning how to be police officers in those commands. Plus with staffing in Jamaica Avenue uh, revitalization, uh, I'm just talking for Queen South, but supplying the officers for the revitalization task force as a permanent detail. You know, we was flying basically 40 cops a day between the second and third platoon. We will not be doing that this summer. So we're gonna be keeping the resources in the command as much as we can. Great. Thank you, Chief. Uh, we'll be moving on to uh, Chair Sherry Elgrado. Hi, Chief. Good afternoon. Uh, one of the things I have to say is that we've been very pleased with our one or two precinct, and I wanted to start off on a good note. They've been doing a lot of outreach in our community. They've been doing building bridges, family funding. You know, we've seen our NCOs and our community affairs officer everywhere, which means a lot. 
basically anywhere we go in the community, they're there reaching out. I've run into people that I know in the community and they're like, oh, we meet the NCOs and, you know, we get to chat with them. So we appreciate the fact that they've been making themselves very open to the community. With that said, some of the issues we are having, we've had a recent uptick in home packages. I had one of my package stolen off my um my porch two weeks ago, and you could actually see the person's face. They weren't scared. They didn't scare to hide it. So it seems as though when these FedEx and Amazon trucks come out, like a half hour, hour later, they are coming out. They're taking the package. I've lived here 22 years, and it's the first time I've had a package stolen. And it's a bit scary knowing someone's just walking up to your porch and just stealing their package. Then I saw a picture of someone else who stole a package, a totally different person. Um, so that's one of the things we've been seeing an uptick in. Um, one of the things that we spoke about when they had the borrow meetings with um, the NYPD command, we spoke about noise in the summer and they said every police officer was gonna be equipped with one of those noise thing, I forgot the name that you can measure the decimal for the noise during the summer. So that's just some of the stuff. There's one more thing. I'm not sure what you guys have control over it, but we have like so much illegal pot shop, smoke shop popping up right after each other. We're receiving two that have um, actually probably going to be licensed pot shop. I think one of it is opposite Queensboro Hall. <laughs> and um, how do we know, like with the SLA, you could look at the database, you could see what's, you know, license, liquor license. So, you know, if you don't see it, somebody doesn't have it. How can you tell which are the legal shops from the illegal shops? I wish there was like a database just like with the SLA. And um, those are just some of our questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just, I'm gonna answer in reverse. Uh, so with the smoke shops, obviously they are few, licenses that are distributed, especially here in Queens. So every other smoke shop is licensed by uh, the Department of Finance, they open up. Um, you know, we do enforcement around it. Uh, we partner with the department, the sheriff's office because there's more civil enforcement that can be done um, surrounding that issue than it can be from a police department standpoint. But like I said earlier, we are doing the work, we do send you know, sometimes undercovers in there, underage. If we find somebody that's egregious, we move to do nuisance abatement on those issues. Um, you know, so we aggressively uh, try to address those issues surrounding smoke shop uh, in regards to that. In regards to a database and we go open it, that's kind of above my pay, pay grade in regards to that. But uh, it's something that we do address. Uh, you know, we read the articles about you know, the proliferation of smoke shops in the 102 precinct and uh, the good captain, Jeremy Kipling, is out there fighting a good fight uh, when we have issues there. You know, because not only are we worried about the sale or the illegal sale of marijuana, we also worry about the crimes that happened in regards also from the uh, robberies of smoke shop, because it's strictly mostly a cash business. So we continue to address that throughout the borough. Uh, in regards to the noise, uh, one of the things we're doing uh, this summer um, we're going to have a community response team. That's something that is spearheaded here at the borough uh, that we're going to go out. We're going to partner with the precincts, those areas uh, where there is excessive noise. We're going to partner with our other city agencies, the Department of Environmental Protection, uh, the Fire Department, Sanitation. And when we find those chronic locations or those excessive locations, we will be bringing all those resources to address those issues. That's part of our summer initiative to address noise complaints and parties. Uh, again, like I said earlier, we were very, very successful last summer and we continue to do that. Uh, in regards to package theft, we see that a lot, to be quite honest with you. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, we will investigate it. If we do have a complaint, we have probative video. Our detective squads will take a case on it. But also we ask people to utilize, a lot of places have, we have those Amazon boxes, those UPS boxes. In regards to that, if you know that you're getting a package delivered and you may not be home for a long period of time, to have, to have you know those packages delivered there or try to schedule a time in which it can be delivered deliver where you in your home. But it is a, it's a, it is a nagging problem, I, I will admit. And 
when it happens, we try to address those. Do we have any organized rings of people going around stealing things? We don't have that, you know? So I think they're more of crimes of opportunity than anything else. Thank you. And uh, Sherry, I, I just want to say, uh, he Heather Beers, uh, she put something in the chat, uh, the group chat here, uh, a location. It's a New York State website that lists all of the authorized legal um, dispensaries so far. Uh, and it looks like there's only five so far in New York, in the confines of New York City. So all, all of the other ones, they are not authorized to, uh, to sell any type of, of uh, marijuana. Thank you, Chiefs, and, and thank you, Heather, for those resources. Uh, moving on, uh, we'll hear from Brian Block. Good evening. Thanks, Michael. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, Mr. BP. Thanks for having this meeting. Chief, um, 105, great communication from 105. Um, just one little, well, one for the air tag that you guys spoke about, I heard the man speaking about it today, and he's always always just me mentioning iPhones. I don't have an iPhone. So folks that don't have iPhones, I, I need guidance on the um, air tags. Will they work with the, um, you know, other phones that are not iPhones? Secondly, the um, there's been a weed bus traveling between in, in 105 between Laurel between Laurelton and Cambria Heights, and it's really an, a nuisance. I mean, 105 is doing the best they can, but he's displaying weed on the bus. He even has where you a sign up where you can you can text him and he's delivering. I, I don't know what can be done about it. 105 has done the best they can, but I you, maybe you guys can just get them off the road because it's bad enough we got the illegal weed shops. Now this guy's promoting it in a bus driving up and down Linden and Merritt Boulevard. And he's just going between both areas. So that, that's something else. And uh, I have faith in NYPD. It's just my personal opinion, there's no one else's. Uh, with the June 4th concert coming up at Belmont, I'm not too confident about Nassau Department. I have confidence with you, with the men and women in 105, but the concert is taking place in Nassau County, but it's gonna affect us over here in Cambridge Heights and Queens Village. And I really think NYPD needs to focus on this, in my humble opinion, because you know the crowd that's gonna be attracted to this concert. I mean, that's just a fact. And the overflow is going to be going through here with MTA. People are going to be traveling along our railroad. They're going to be driving through our area. It's going to be a certain element coming into our communities that we don't want. And I just think, I just want to put it out there. That's all I'm saying. Like, I have confidence in you guys. I'm really not confident in Nassau County being able to handle this crowd that's going to be coming in here. And I don't know if you guys have been talking about it. I think you, there's been one or two meetings, but I really think you guys need to focus on this because it's, it can really get out of hand. Um, on June 4th. All right, Brian, thank you. Again, we're gonna do it in reverse. So in regards to that concert that's taking place at the UBS arena, uh, we are in communications with Nassau County. We are gonna, as we get closer to the date, we're gonna work, we are gonna have a detail in place. You know, uh, my concern is more of a parking overflow issue than anything else. I'm gonna be very, very honest with you. Um, you know, so we're working with security at UBS. We're working with uh, Nassau County um, in regards to that. So we are already well aware of that. So we're going to put a plan in place in regards to address those issues in regards to traffic flow. You know, when we have events at uh, Belmont, like when you have the Belmont States, we already do a traffic detail. So obviously we're going to ratchet it up uh, because of the nature of the um the program, and like, again, my major concern that I have right now, Brian, is that just parking. You know, people are not going to want to pay for the parking, and they're going to want to park on the Queen side and just take a little five block little walk hobble. over to Amen. the UBS arena, uh, right. which will, you know, impact the people who park, right? And, you know, we can't have people putting cones out. So uh, I understand that. <laughs> so we would definitely look to address You might have to give a pass on that one because I'm just, <laughs> I'm just concerned. Really, I, I, mean, I just know... I'm being biased. I'm not saying maybe the artists are the problems, but the followers are going to be the problems. Well, those historically, also, you know, to let's you know be very honest, those issues, you know, that concert has not had that issue. I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, and and and, and where it has a previous venue, you know, to be quite honest with you. Um, of course, everything can't be controlled, but we're gonna do our best. We're gonna work with our intelligence division to get intel 
uh, in regards to any similar beefs that we need to be aware of. But you're going to see a robust police presence out there. Uh, unfortunately, I already canceled my plans that weekend, Brian, so I'll be out there also. Uh, in regards to the air tags, uh, obviously, you know, I'm not a, I don't have any stock in Apple. I missed that boat a long, long time ago. But, um, you know, obviously a lot of their stuff is proprietary, but I'm sure there's other available things out there that you could use with, you know, those who quote unquote live the Android life for whatever reason why they do it, uh, that will be able to, to track it. Now, in regards to the Wii Bus, I have the good inspector Pinkasoff uh, online. He's going to talk about some of the things that we've done in regards to it, uh, because I've seen that bus out there and Igor and his team have done some work around that. So Igor. Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Chief. Thank you. Good evening, Brian. We have taken that bus numerous on numerous occasions. Unfortunately, he's properly registered and he has all the paperwork. So the night that we did take him, he was uh, blocking a uh, pedestrian uh, ramp uh, on Springfield. So we have told him. But then he that was the night when we did our towing operation for the, um, the trucks and the buses and commercial vehicles. However, he has come back to the cemetery lot uh, on Springfield and have reclaimed his property. And uh, he's basically following the rules. He knows he doesn't leave it on the street. He basically, during the day, he parks on America. And then during the evening, he brings it down to Linden Boulevard and moves it around. Um, as of uh, last week, the vehicle is still on the road and it's properly registered. So we can't just take it away from him. Go ahead. Does he sell weed? He probably does. And um, <laughs> talk about air tags. I did mention last week, community council, and then the mayor right. the, uh, mayor announced it yesterday. So I don't think it works with uh, an, uh, with your phone. Maybe if, if you have an iPad, you could download the app, you know, and, and register it, and uh, you'll be able to use it. But I don't think it works with uh, non Apple products because it's an Apple product. All right. Uh, there, there definitely are other uh, products that you could use with with different, uh, like with an Android phone. So, okay, yeah, if, yeah. If I can mention, so so as far as a, a product that you can use for like Android phones, you can use a tile. Um, that's the that's the actual name of the uh, the device. It's very similar to Apple AirTags. It's called a tile, T I L E, and it has the same functionality essentially as um, as Apple AirTags. Thank you so much. And Chief, communication out of 105 is fantastic. So I got, as chair of CB13, president of my civic, I have no problems with 105 communications there and they're very responsive. So just keep giving them gold stars over there. Thank you very <laughs> much, Brian. <laughs> right. Thank you both. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge council member Joanne Ariola, who I know was with us. I don't know if she's still on the Zoom, uh, but wanted to acknowledge her presence. Uh, I don't see her, but um, I know she. I know she has staff on the line. So thank you very much. Um, and then moving on, I will hear a question from Frank Taylor. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. Um, hope everyone's doing well. I'd first like to say to the police officers and uh, the chiefs and everything, thank you for your service. It is appreciated. I'm chairman of Community Board Three which takes care of uh, North Corona, Jackson Heights, and East Elmhurst. We have a problem here every summer, and, and I'd like to get ahead of it if we could at all this year. Um, the first thing is uh, the promenade, Malcolm X promenade. Uh, during the summertime, it seems as though the, uh, it's the 110 precinct, and I wanna say we have a great relationship with both precincts. Um, I'm understanding now that they are actually doing coordinated efforts together, which was very good to hear. But we have a, a problem with uh, uh, homeless down there. We have a problem with uh, the boats as far as down there. Three or four years ago, we had a mass shooting down there. Three or four people got shot. At that time, then the one tenth put a task force down there and they actually closed the park or the promenade at a certain time. And they had a real presence down there and it stopped all that from happening. The loud music that goes from uh, East Elmhurst to Bayshore, uh, or excuse me, Bayside uh, stopped also. That is a very big nuisance that goes on down there along with any illicit act that you want. 
uh, I would like to know if there's a plan to get ahead of that this year. That's my first question. Uh, my second question is Roosevelt Avenue. Roosevelt Avenue is horrendous. Uh, you have vendors, you have prostitution houses, you have drug dealers uh, right out in the open from the 70s to the 90s. Uh, there's no lighting out there. I don't know how an officer, I'm a retired officer. Uh, I've been retired for 17 years. Uh, my father was one of the first uh, black detectives, actually first grade detectives in New York City. I don't know how you let officers walk those blocks with no lights on those blocks. I mean, they're in danger. And, and uh, you know, uh, I know that there's supposed to be some type of effort to come down there and, and clean that up, but it should have never got to that. And then action does need to be taken down there. Um, it's it's a scary situation. Those are those are my two questions: uh, Malcolm X Promenade and uh, Roosevelt Avenue. Thank you. Hey, uh, good afternoon, sir. This is John Portalati, commanding officer of the One Ten Precinct. Uh, we met you at the community. Yes, uh, I know who you are, sir. Yep, it's good to see you again, sir. And I, I, I know we we spoke about this briefly at the community comstat. In regards to Roosevelt Avenue, um, you know the CEO of the one fifteen, uh, Miss Downing, she's fantastic. Yeah, 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 I agree. I couldn't say it better than myself. But uh, we are working hand in hand. So uh, it's gonna take a minute to answer it. So just bear with me. So basically, she got fourteen brand new officers. I got eleven brand new officers. We're gonna use these new officers, and we're gonna post them all over Roosevelt Avenue. Roosevelt Avenue is going to be flooded with officers. You, from, from starting this coming week, coming up, you, you're not going to go down a, a block or two without seeing a New York City police cop on post. Those, that, that area of, is going to be covered from 17.30, which is uh, 5.30 p.m. to 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, I noticed there may be a, a couple of different crimes that happened early on during the day, but I have steady sectors and the officers that are on patrol and the NCOs are going to be out, out there uh, earlier than that throughout the day. So you're going to see a lot of more officers on Roosevelt Avenue. I'm, I'm talking from 74 on Rosie all the way down to 111 on Rosie. We have working with the, the borough chief, uh, chief uh, Bessenbach, with her leadership, um, finding out the most important streets where she's causing the most havoc for the community. And there's going to be officers on both sides. As you mentioned earlier, there's no div the division. You know, on, on paper, the, the Roosevelt Avenue is the divider between the 110 and 115. Now with the officers that I'm speaking about and moving forward, there is no more divider. Uh, officers that are assigned to the 115, if they see an issue in the 110, they are instructed and uh, we will be held accountable if they don't take action on the 110 side and vice versa. My officers on the 110, and they see Southern a uh, block in, into the 115, I expect them to take action. If they don't, they'll be very, they will be disciplined. But we're setting the tone now all right, before the summertime, so before the summertime hits, because usually summertime is when Roosevelt gets a little crazy. We're not waiting for June, July. We're sending it to them now in April and May to let them know these streets are belong to the New York City Depl Police Department and the, the good people of the community. If you break the law, you will be arrested. If you decide to break a quality of life of a uh, infraction, you will be summoned. And if you have a warrant, you're going to jail. That is the temp uh, the, the the tone we are setting. Right now in Roosevelt Avenue, you mentioned prostitution. Yes, unfortunately, there's a lot of prostitution. If you go there late at night, especially between one and two, three in the morning, you see the the ladies working uh, outside the right right outside the the house. Um, but uh, I be, we've been talking to Vice. We have an operation set up, not just this week, but every week moving forward. There's going to be a operation of hitting unlicensed vendors, prostitution moving forward. Now. When I say once a week, one, the 110 is doing it this week. So when I, we're going to hit three or four places on our, on our side, but we're also speaking to the 115 to keep everybody guessing. They don't know when we're coming, but we're going to hit places in the 115 side too. So the 110 is going to hit both sides and vice versa. Next week when the 115 does it, they're going to hit places on their side and they're going to come into the 110 and they're going to be like, wow, they got a lot of cops from different places, not just the precinct coming to hit me every week. We're gonna keep the, keep the uh, the restaurants and the and the storefronts uh, uh, accountable, 
for the amount of liquor they serve to the to the customers. We don't want drunk walking around the streets at two, three in the morning because that causes problems. Everybody knows nothing good comes out from hanging out to three, four in the morning. All right. If you're gonna hang out there, that's fine as long as you obey the law. If you don't, again, you will be summoned, you will be arrested. We are setting the tone early. Roosevelt is gonna get cleaned up. I I'm not happy with it. Uh, Inspector Downey's not happy. With it. I know my chief's not out of it. She's giving me a lot of resource to dedicate to Roosevelt Avenue. Once we get Roosevelt Avenue under control, you I promise you, I give you my word, you will see Roosevelt Avenue back to what it was a couple of years ago, where people could walk the streets, they don't have to step over any any intoxicated males. It's going to be clean. It's going to be more kid-friendly where kids can go to the restaurants with their families and not worry about uh, getting robbed or any seeing anything they shouldn't be seeing at that young age. Roosevelt is the number one priority in the 110, 115. Like you said, Inspector Downey's a phenomenal partner of mine. Yeah. We are working. We talk daily. So we are always looking to what we got to do to take care of the problems that arise on Roosevelt on a daily basis. I thank you for that. Yeah, Frank, I don't know if I could be any, uh, as, uh, any more passionate than, than John is about this, but but uh, exactly what he said, um, listen, we, we are not happy with, with what Roosevelt Avenue looks like, and we are putting everything that we can into it to make sure that, that it gets cleaned up and then it'll be maintenance. That's fantastic to hear. But also the second part of my question was the Malcolm X promenade. That's another area that's 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 just bad. I mean, uh, the stuff that goes on in that park, that that stretch there is horrendous. Yeah, we're, we're working on putting uh, putting something together for uh, uh, for the upcoming months for that. Um, actually, before that, so absolutely, that's on. Well, our please do because well. we don't want another shooting down there, nope. and you know Not everything else. If when that place goes uh, away, nobody's there. Uh, no park police. I, I never see a park police unless there's a dead body that floats up. That's the only time you see them. So, you know, down there, and it's very dark. I mean, as you guys know, uh, those are areas that every summer you have the bikes, the unlicensed bikes down there. You have the uh, the music. These, they bring these humongous speakers that go all the way to Bayside down there. And God knows what else. Um Sorry, in regards to the, the, the bikes and everything, just to let you know, we already set the tone very early on. And this this started, I have to give credit to the Chief Patrol's office, uh, Chief Shell. He spearheaded this program where he sent the borough um, community safety teams uh, from every borough to the 110 for a day, where we attacked Flushing Manor Park. And not just Flushing Manor Park, but everything around the area of Flushing Manor Park and anything, any, any parks in the 110, because... Flushing Meadow Park is where everybody goes with the illegal mopeds, the dirt bikes, uh, the illegal motorcycles. Right. Cool. On that day in, in March, we took off. We took off between twelve and twenty. I don't want to give you the wrong number, but it was between twelve and twenty of illegal mo mopeds, motorcycles, and ATVs that day. We set the tone very early. If you look at, at the right now, the year to date, we're up one hundred and sixty-six percent of taking illegal mopeds, illegal motorcycles, and illegal ATVs off the streets already. I read, last year, I'm going to be honest with you, I got there late in September, but my counterpart, he was caught off guard with that, the amount of illegal mopeds. Uh, I, when I got into September, I was a little undermanned with the, how we we attacked the illegal mopeds, the motorcycles, all throughout the 110. And this is a citywide problem, but under the phenomenal leadership of my chief, she's putting together a flushing metal park detail was going to be solely to destroy and these motorcycles. If you want to roll your motorcycle or your or moped, that's fine, but you need to pop the paperwork. You have to wear a helmet. You have to follow the rules and regulations of the of the vehicle to, of the vehicles. Uh, it, uh, we're not taking it seriously. I'm not giving a free pass to anybody this year. We already set the tone in regards to that as well. Like I said, we're up over 166%. Um, my, my, if you look at the, my, if you want to come to the 110 right now, I'll show you my garage. It's packed with illegal mopeds and, um, uh, illegal vehicles that are not supposed to be driven on the streets. That is an issue that we're going to take very, very seriously. Last year, these uh, certain individuals used these bones of, of transportation to, to commit robberies. And it was very hard for us to stop because they would go down the one-way street. Uh, officers wouldn't be able to drive with the RMPs. We're not, we're not going to get caught off guard this year. We're, we're, we're clamping down those uh, illegal vehicles. If they don't have the proper paperwork, we're taking them. We're giving them a, a, a courtesy of about a week 
to get the proper paperwork. If not, we're sending them downtown to the pound where they get just uh, those those motor, those uh, mopeds and illegal motorcycles is a menace to our society. And we are on top of it. We have my word. I'll give you my word right now. Roosevelt Avenue will be cleaned up before the summer hits. And everybody you see riding a moped, I'm telling you, they were going to be engaged by my officers, both in the 110, 115 side and also Roosevelt Task Force. So moving forward, we are going to attack. We're not waiting. We're not playing. We're not reacting. We're being proactive. We're going to attack these individuals who are breaking the law. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Moving on to Dolores Orr. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Dolores Orr, Community Board 14, which is Broad Channel and the Rockaways. So <clears throat> I want to just say I know that the summer detail is a hardship for all the precincts in the South. We've had a summer detail for at least 50 years, perhaps longer, but certainly I recall at least 50 years. And I know with everyone's shortage that it is a hardship and I, I want to apologize for that. But at the same time, we get about 50,000 visitors a weekend. So we really, uh, we really do need the help and we certainly do appreciate it. I just want to quickly tell Brian I have an Android and I have a Samsung uh, Galaxy and it's called a smart tag. Instead of an air, air tag for the uh, iPhones, you can get a smart tag. Thanks, okay. Dolores. Okay. <laughs> and, Good looking out. <laughs> yep, yep, I ordered mine yesterday after I saw the press conference, so. All right, um, Dolores, good to talk to you. So uh, I just wanted to, in terms of both Precincts are visible, engaged. Um, they listen to every silly complaint that our residents have and all the serious complaints they have. So we're very happy with the commanding offices, Timmy and Carlos and um, all of the offices. Um, so we're very happy with that. I just, a couple of things on the summer. Um, the noise meters, which Sherry had mentioned, it's really critical for us to have that for all of our parks and the beach, uh, especially at night. And I know that I believe we have meters in both precincts. My concern is, uh, do we have offices that are trained to use the meters? Because from what I understand, everyone has to be trained. Um, so we wanna make sure that we have sufficient on each tour that um, the meter is available for all. And then the other thing we were talking about, because one of the challenges we're gonna have this year is Army Corps of Engineers has done some of the uh, final dunes and they're so high that you can't necessarily see the people on the beach from the boardwalk. So we had reached out to the parks department asking, did they have lifeguard chairs? There was a point in time when we used to have lifeguard chairs on the boardwalk the police officers to sit on and stand up. Everyone could see them and they could see a much greater radius of um, land to see people on the beach and the boardwalk. So I saw Eric uh, Peterson, the um, parks administrator the other day, and he indicated they did not believe that they had um, lifeguard chairs that they could provide to PD. So I did speak um, <clears throat> to Carlos Ribeiro and he was gonna reach out and see if we could get any of the towers. I don't know what the real name is, the single police officer towers, a couple of them in strategic places um, for uh, to enhance the police presence. And those are my questions. All right, Dolores, thank you very much. Uh, in regards to this, I do again, go backwards. Uh, we actually do have a meeting scheduled with the Parks Department for this Thursday where we're gonna sit down and talk about not only the beach, but you know all the events that's happening in the parks departments this summer. Uh, as you brought up, there is construction that's going on uh, certain stretches of Rockaway Beach. Uh, we're gonna make some adjustments in regards to how we patrol that area. But there's a part of the, the beach that was traditionally open that's not gonna be open um, this year. So we're gonna work around it. In regards to uh, the chairs or, or getting, I guess Carlos was talking about a skywatch. Those yes. are things we could look into. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's pros and cons with everything. So we would have to look from a strategic standpoint, is it most advantageous for us to use it? Uh, because you're really, uh, 
making a, two police officers actually stationary, to be quite honest with you. So that's something we, we, we have to look at. In regards to noise meter training, um, I don't have the numbers, but I'm sure we have people in those commands that are noise meter trained, but also we're gonna be working with our community response team who has that training. We're gonna be working with other city agencies uh, in regards to, so when we see issues, we can address those things also. So we'll be out there full force this summer. You know, I know one of the major issues uh, that we're looking to work around is the overall parking um, in the beach area over the week over the weekends. I see you side. I understand it's very challenging. No, I, 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 yeah. But it's, we're gonna look to we're gonna again we're gonna look to find an innovative way to address it to deter it as best as we can. Uh, moving this summer. And it's really with 50,000 visitors and no available parking. Um, it, it, it's, it's just a shame that people come all that way with their families and there's no place for them to park. And it's just frustrating for everyone involved. And there's nothing you can do and there's nothing um, I can do about it. Um, the other thing, and we're waiting for the final, um, they are evidently the counter um, Terrorism uh, group had done a survey a few years back uh, in terms of vulnerability on the boardwalk, in terms of um, vehicles coming up and crashing into people. I think after the U-Haul truck in Manhattan, uh, and my understanding is that they are going to be putting barricades in four or five places so that vehicles cannot get through. And mopeds and dirt bikes wouldn't even be able to get through. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, so one of the things we worked with uh, our counterterrorism division is that they did an assessment uh, in regards to vulnerabilities. Uh, one of the things, and this is kind of like in my wheelhouse from one of my previous assignments, uh, we looked to use bollards or blocks to prevent vehicles from coming up on the board, board, board walk, mm -hmm. uh, similar to the incident that happened on the Upper West Side, the Lower West Side, to be honest with you, on Halloween about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So we are looking the way to what we call target hardening of uh, the mm -hmm. beach to prevent that from happening. So we continue to have those conversations, not only with the police department, but also with the parks department and mm -hmm. the fire department. Yeah, so we, we are prepared for that, you know, that it may happen. And there really hasn't been an outcry. Probably the, the guys that ride their racing bikes at 40 miles an hour won't be happy because they'll have to dismount but we want everyone to be safe. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you both. Um, we'll uh, move back to uh, Betty Bratton, followed by Heather. Thank you. Uh, just a quick request of both, both chiefs, really. You know, it's kind of a global problem for all of us. It's May 1st. We're going into the season where we're going to be building up to 4th of July with fireworks. I'd ask both chiefs to go back to the department level at, in Manhattan, that there be a very conscious effort this year. Now that we are post COVID and the wild west days of anything goes, should be coming to an end, that we do a massive PR blitz that fireworks are illegal. And that, you know, we have both of the airports in this city are in this borough. And we have people shooting off professional grade fireworks in their backyards and in front of their houses. You know, at some point there is going to be a catastrophe. So that's just a quick request because it's a problem in every precinct, I'm sure. Thank you. You're welcome, Betty. That's something we will continue to work on. It's cheap. Social media is easy. Just keep blasting them with, it's illegal. <laughs> Thank you so much, Betty. Uh, uh, Heather, uh, followed by uh, my colleague Lynette uh, from the Speaker's Office. Good evening. I just wanted to say thank you to um, all of the NYPD on this call. I feel like the community engagement from the NYPD over the past two months has really been 
ramped up. It's been amazing um, between the meeting with the chief of patrol and the comp stat. And then also the follow-up afterwards, I've received follow-up from both meetings um, where I've been able to sort of present my concerns as to what we see as overall issues in our precinct. So we're, we're super happy with um, our relationship with Queens North and our relationship with the 112. And um, we know this is extra work above and beyond. So I went, just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. Um, and it's really like, the issues that we have going into summer, we already know that the 112 is working on. We know that um, we have a problem with ATVs flying through our community over and over again. And we know that they're already working on that. So I just, just wanted to take a quick moment and say thank you. This has been, it's been really helpful and I feel like we're on good footing. So thank you. Heather, I, I wanna say thank you to you as well. Uh, you know, as I had said earlier, while we see a lot of things, a lot of what we, uh, we need is is the eyes and ears of, of the community. And so, you know, as you uh, encounter issues and, and, and you know, uh, folks give you complaints, please make sure that you relay them up to us so that we can we can work on them. And, and I know I've said this before, I can't promise that it'll be fixed tomorrow, but we will do everything that we can. We will start working by tomorrow to to get it fixed. And, you know, some things some things are overnighters and other things are uh, a little bit prolonged, but we'll, we absolutely will continue to work together to, to address the issues. Thank you all. Um, next, we'll have Lynette uh, from Speaker Adrian Adams' office. Hi, everyone, and sorry for my screen. I'm traveling home. Um, I have a two part question very brief and it follows Heather first to say thank you for the service to NYPD and all that you do we're forever grateful and we understand the, the capacity that you 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 serve in um, I just have a question I heard repeatedly a reference to several reference to the NYPD's uh, educational campaigns and at one point even saying an aggressive educational campaign you know around the grand larceny the vehicle collisions and even as um, mentioned previously, the need for something in the area of fireworks and so forth. My question is, how, how can the NYPD, um, particularly Queen South and throughout, direct us to this uh, educational campaign? Is it public? Is it internal? We really need uh, to see some of those messagings to also share within our constituency, within our districts, within our organization. And, and, and I'll move that question to the other part. As you all know, we all are experiencing an increase in the reports of, you know, the uh, illegal smoke shops as a serious, increasingly serious um, quality of life issue. Not only is the fact that they're there, but then the gathering, and now we're getting calls to the district office about the smells and so forth. So we know um, that this is going to uh, pick up even the more in the summer, and then God forbid that some more will open up. With that, I wanted to ask, is there any um, um, F, what are the current efforts, if any, to inform to notify these illegal shops of the enforcement that they face? Uh, and how can we answer the constituents, uh, those calls that are increasing every day with reassurance that things are gonna get better in that regard? Thank you. All right, thank you, Lynette. Uh, very good two questions. Uh, first thing, you can follow us on, on social media. Each precinct has a social media page on Twitter, also on Facebook. Uh, that's where we do a lot of our, our outreach. So you can simply follow us. I have up my own Twitter page at NYPD Queen South, I do believe. Uh, I'm not really one of the Twitter generation. So that's how we use to get a lot of our messaging out. Uh, also, you can follow us on NYPD News. Uh, that's like the central hub for all the, uh, the social media sites for the city. Uh, so that's how we get a lot of our information out um, in regards to crime trends, crime prevention, what's going on in the communities. Uh, going back to the topic about uh, smoke shops, like I said earlier, we have done some enforcement around smoke shops. Uh, it's a complex issue for a lot of different reasons, but we continue to work with other city agencies, um, uh, mostly the sheriff's department in regards to civil enforcement. Uh, if there's other quality of life issues that are stemming from 
the smoke shops. Uh, we will address them if there's, you know, loitering in front or if there's, you know, different quality of life issues that's going on, then we will task each precinct to address it. Uh, obviously, from an overall crime perspective, we will address that from the New York City Police Department. You know, one of the things huge with the smoke shops is obviously the cash availability would make it most um, attractive to people to commit a robbery there. Uh, but also what we've also done, we sent our crime prevention community affairs officers out, number one, to survey the amount of smoke shops that are in the area. Uh, and number two, we do engage them. We engage them twofold, and I'm going to be very, very honest with you. We engage them from a crime prevention standpoint, right, because it is a license. It had, they have been issued licenses by other city agencies to operate, so we want them to do the best they can to harden, like I said before, in regards to when we talked about the beach, to make it target, target hardened so that they are less susceptible to being robbed. Also, we have conversations with them about how to be good neighbors. Listen, you know, um, you know, things in life called unforeseen consequences. So when all the changes came about in regards to the marijuana, marijuana laws, I think it was an unforeseen consequence and it's something that's gonna be managed. But we continue to address it here in the New York City Police Department with the Sheriff's Department, because again, like I said earlier, there's a lot that can be done in civil enforcement compared to criminal enforcement when it comes to marijuana. Okay, and I thank you. And I, I suspect that the perpetrators would not necessarily be following all your good news on your social media sites. But um, I would ask if there's any public um, notifications because on one of our meetings, someone even asked the officers who said the same thing. We have an aggressive educational campaign and they asked, are you reaching out to clergy? Are you reaching out to schools? You know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, we, we all need to be informed as to, you know, maybe a, a, a one sheet talking points on how to respond and reassure the community as a whole that efforts are being made, you know, we do realize it's a citywide concern and so forth and so on. But we have to get more messaging out on both sides to reassure the public. And then also, like you said, to inform the shop, shop owners and licensees. So it's just a big thing and it's becoming a, a little tough for us in the sense of answering constituent calls when you don't really have a real answer. So if anything that can help us with that, we, we would appreciate it. Absolutely, we'll work on that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, next, we'll hear a question from Phyllis Zarello from council member Joanna Ariola's office. Good evening, Phyllis. I believe on your, you're in mute. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Michael. And thank you, Queensboro President, for hosting the meeting. I just wanted to say the councilwoman had to jump off, but we have three of the best uh, commanding officers in the whole city of New York. They're very responsive. They're they're motivated to work, and we're just very happy with them, and as well as with Chief Williams, who is always very responsive. He's always out and about, and, and that's what's great about our commanding officers. They're, they're willing to do the job that regular officers are willing to do as well. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. And it is really a great uh, experience working with them. Phyllis, thank you very much. Your check is in the mail. Thanks so much, Phyllis. Always nice to close on a positive note. Um, seeing no further questions, I, I wanna thank everyone for attending tonight's uh, Borough Board meeting. Uh, I'd especially like to thank tonight's presenters, uh, our chiefs, and uh, my QBPO staff for putting this all together. Our next borough board meeting will be held on Monday, June 5th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, with that, I wish everyone a great night. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good night, all. Stay safe. Stay safe.